What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In today's incredibly quick video, I'll show you how to fix color banding with OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS. Now, of course, what is color banding? Well, on the screen, you're looking at a very smooth gradient, assuming you're looking at a medium or high quality YouTube stream. However, if you have a look at this one over here, you can notice a very stark difference between the two. The second one has something called color banding, which results in a much more disgusting looking gradient. You can often have this while playing games or simply having static images on your screen that don't change at all. It can be incredibly annoying, especially when you don't see anything like this on the screen that you're recording on, instead it's only coming up in your recording. Assuming it's only showing up in your recording, that's exactly what this video is here to tackle. First of all, I'll open up OBS Studio and open up the settings in the bottom right. Then I'll head across to the Advanced tab and I'll simply make sure that Color Format is set to NV12 and Color Range matches my screen's color range. Usually the higher this is, the more quality you can have in color. How exactly do you know the color range of your screen? Well, simply right click your desktop and open up the NVIDIA control panel or the AMD equivalent. Then head across to the change resolution tab, select the monitor that you game on and then scroll down. At the very bottom, you should have this option checked. Use the NVIDIA color settings and then you'll see how to put dynamic range. You can choose between full and limited. Inside of OBS, you can choose between partial and full. They mean the same thing. What exactly do they mean? Well, looking at the tooltip at the bottom, output dynamic range allows the user to select the dynamic range of the output, which can preserve shadow and highlight details in the imagery being viewed. Limited is 16 to 235, most commonly used by televisions, and the full 0 to 255 may allow more detail in the dark and white areas of some content. If you have it set to full, you can expect much more clarity. So, assuming you have the set to full, you'll have a better color experience while playing games. If not, you should try changing this to full to see what happens. Then, whenever you have this set to, you should make sure that the one in OBS matches it, just for the best compatibility. For example, if your screen is set to partial and you're recording in OBS with full, you'll notice that your video comes out a lot darker than before for some reason. Well, that's simply because the colors on the bottom side of the spectrum are simply stretched out to reach the very bottom of it. And the same goes for the very top meaning that your image will be darker. If it's the other way around and it's full on your screen and it's only partial inside of OBS, you'll notice less of a difference as the other way around, but your image could look a little bit more washed out or not so vibrant. Anyways, with that aside, that's the color settings. As for the color space, this is completely up to you. I simply record at 709 as it seems to look better on my setup. Though of course, this is completely up to you. Next up, We'll visit the output tab and visit the streaming or recording section depending on what you do. If your bitrate is very low for the platform that you're streaming on or recording to, you should try and raise this as it may help you fix your color banding, especially if there are noticeable blocks showing up on your screen in high motion content. The higher that you set your bitrate, the more quality your video will have on the output. However, the higher that you raise it, the lower you can also drop the preset, meaning that your PC will have a lesser performance impact if you're recording with a higher bitrate. This can save you on precious processing power while playing different games and result in a better looking recording overall. 60 megabits per second or 60,000 kilobits per second is definitely overkill for 2K 100 FPS content, but of course, because I'm recording it and I have tons of disk space, this isn't an issue for me. I'd much rather have excess quality that I can get rid of and ignore later than not enough quality in the first place. Once you're happy with both of those settings, you should be about good. One of the things that I've heard of is that when you're on a X264 setting, you'll have the CQP option, which is constant quality. The lower this number is, the better your video looks. So of course, lowering this is the same as raising the bitrate. You'll see bitrate on CBR, VBR, and the lossless tab records at the maximum bitrate possible, so you can go ahead and ignore that unless you're happy with extremely large file sizes. Something else you should try is that color spaces that I mentioned over here. I didn't really touch on it as this is probably less important than the other options, but you can try changing this between 709 and the 601 options, which are available here. If you have more options, try with those as well. I'm not too sure if you may have more. It could be an HDR thing. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Something else you can try is changing the renderer. Settings, advanced, and you can change the renderer from OpenGL to Direct 3D11. People say that they have better performance on D3D11, but if you're having issues here, you can try the other option, which is OpenGL. Once again, I'm not able to change it as I'm currently recording. Then for Streamlabs, where do we see the same options? Well, if I simply open up Streamlabs OBS, 
Head into the settings in the bottom left, then the output section. Inside of here, we can once again change the bitrate and the same on the recording tab over here. Then for the color settings, we can get there by visiting the advanced section once again, except here it's shown right at the top, NV12, I420, I444 and RGB. NV12 should be the best one. Color space, 709 and the full color range over here. Having this ticked is probably better for the performance on your PC, unless you have an incredibly underpowered GPU and an incredibly overpowered CPU. There really isn't too much of a difference between Streamlabs OBS and normal OBS. But anyways, besides that, that's basically it for this video. Thank you all for watching. My name is me Techno over here for Troubleshoot. Hopefully this helped reduce the color banding that you could be experiencing inside of OBS Studio. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.